Hi, so um, I'm here to present uh, the new version of Perpleo, which is part of the Plagios project that is um, an international project that is funded by Mellon and that's been running for a while. We are now in our seventh um, incarnation. We're now Pelagius 7. Um, and what Pelagius does, it's you know, very, very relevant to this um, session because it's about connecting digital resources um, on the past to study the past. And the way the Pelagius started had a very, very strong focus on geography. Um, so the connections were mostly based on the geographical re references that these documents had in common. Um, now the project has expanded and we uh, not only you know, look at the classical past, which was our starting point, and we not only look at places, but um, we are you know, uh, broadening our, our scope in time and in the kind of connections that we're looking at. But first of all, Pelagius is a community of users. This is what we want to be. So uh, we, our work is to encourage and to facilitate creating linked open data, creating these connected resources. And the way we do it is, well, curating the community, which we like to do a lot, but also we develop two tools. And one is to create these annotations, to create um, things that are ready to become linked open data with Recogito, which is our annotation platform. So if you don't know it, just have a go. It's fun, <coughs> it's free, it's online. Um, and the other tool is Periplayer, which is what we're talking about today, which is our search and visualization tool to explore connections about linked resources. Um, as you can see from the banner there, it's a beta version, it's still under development, but we think it's already a nice um, tool that we can discuss. And by the way, we won last year the DH award as best tool, so um, let's, let's try to see why. Um, as uh, for Recogito per player, it's entirely free, it's online, you just go there. I usually give live presentations, but the connection is so flaky here that I decided to take screenshots, which is not that good, so I'm sorry about that. But it works perfectly, so feel free to replicate my sample queries or to do other sample queries, just you know, have fun with it now or later um, at home. So what Periplayo is, is basically um, well, let's say that in, a, in an ideal world, we would like to query all linked data that are available. They're all linked, so we can query them all. Now, of course, you know that that is not possible, that there is a lot of work to do into interconnecting formats and standardization and so forth. So what Periplayo does is allowing us to search into um, a selection of data. And this data, this, this linked data that comes from um, a number of data contributors, our partners that have decided to say, okay, this is our, these are our data, and you take them and you connect them and people can play with it. And this is part of, this is a screenshot, so it's not the complete list, you can scroll if you actually go online, but we have, you know, a not too shabby number of contributions. Still, you know, the, the, the aim of Periplayo is not to become the biggest repository of linked open data. Uh, it's just to show, it's a proof of concept, to show what happens, what can be possible, what we could see if we could visualize some kinds of connections between linked open data. So that's what we're going to do. And what I really like about Periplayo, and I think it's the reason behind its, uh, its name, is that it encourages <coughs> users to just you know, travel through the data and maybe, you know, discovering connections and discovering maybe things that you didn't even know you were interested in knowing and discovering patterns and visualizing, you know, trends and things like that. Theoretically, it's an exploring tool and, you know, I, I really encourage you to just try random queries and see uh, what you come up with. And um, the good thing about Perpleo is that you can start this uh, you know, theoretically endless uh, journey through linked open data from various kind of queries. You could start, for example, from the name of a place. Um, I picked uh, uh, modern Taranto, which was uh, uh, Greek colony Taras. Just by chance, it's my hometown, but there is no connection with that. And so let's, you know, let's input the, the name of a place. What we get? Well, we get a number of hits. And we get um, a list of the, um, uh, you know, of the results that we got. 
And we see that, you know, as we could expect, quite, um, you know, unsurprisingly, most of the heats are located in the area, in the geographic position of um, Taranto, but we also have some, you know, more odd unexpected heats, for example, you know, in the south of Spain, and we may discover that there is, you know, a coin that is related to Taras uh, for some reason that is, um, that ended up there. And um, you also see that we have, if you look, we have a light here, don't we? Do we? No, we don't. Okay, you can see at the top of the page that we have 64 results. And we can, if we, if we click on, you know, the little uh, arrow there, we can break down the, resource, uh, the results and see that they come, for example, from different A sources. And we can click on that and discover that these are the eight sources and the, what capacity they have contributed to the results that we got for, uh, for Taranto. And, um, okay, I will, I will say various things showing different examples. So, um, there was a kind of uh, <laughs> trip that you could do through Periplayer. But let's try something else. Let's try um, uh, writing a type of object, like, for example, a tetradrachm. And we got a massive amount of results. Is Ethan here? No, he's responsible for that amount of results. So we have, you know, 30, 23,000 something uh, results. And they are all, you know, uh, they are listed one by one. And you see that each of them, we'll see that better in other examples, always have a link to the original database, to the original source. So everything is very transparent. And actually, we see Peripleo um, not as you know, a substitute of these data sets. Uh, on the contrary, it's a pointer to the data sets. We really encourage the users to go back to the original source. But what I wanted to show you about you know, the distribution of the findings of the Theta Dracum is about the time slider that we have there, which is um, it's a quite nice widget. And I know that you know, this is uh, you know, I shouldn't, uh, I know it's uh, not necessary to say that, but uh, just to be on the safe side, uh, let's be reminded, of course, I mean, the results in Periplea, of course, are biased because they are the visualization of a selection of the available data. This is not everything that we know about Tetradrachm. It's everything that we know about Tetradrachm from the sources that have contributed their data to Periplea. Let's just uh, bear that in mind. But you see um, in the visualization that we can, you know, clearly spot uh, the the, uh, the places where tetradrachm were found or minted more often, and we can see that some dots are larger than others because they are, uh, let's say, representing a place that received more uh, more connections. Uh, but this is the result for every tetradrachm uh, information that we have at any point in time. If we start selecting the time we are interested in, just moving um, the, um, the ends of the time slider, we can, for example, look at how this distribution changed through time and what were the places, for example, that were particularly relevant at a certain point of time, but then they lost their uh, prominence, for example, and then we see, you know, maybe how uh, the um, uh, the successfulness, I mean, the fortune of, um, uh, of a kind of object, in this case, our coin, you know, moved completely for whatever reason we can make, you know, our hypothesis and how it became, you know, less and less prominent and how, you know, places that were not even in the picture at the beginning began, re became really, really, really um, relevant. So now that you have had, you know, a first uh, taste of, you know, the kind of searches that we can do in Peripla, we'll do more later. Uh, I just wanted to stop and give you some information, um, a very, very simple level of, uh, on how the information is structured in Peripla, what we actually see when we look at our visualizations. Well, we have mainly three kind of entities in Peripla, and one are records. And records are the things that are given to us. Records are the things that we import, that we ingest in Periplayo. So for example, uh, Pleiades is one of the, of the sources that we have ingested in Periplayo. So um, Rome, in the URI for Rome, uh, the entry for Rome in uh, Pleiades, it's a record in uh, Periplayo. But in our visualization, what we show you are items. 
And items are, let's say, artificial entities that are unique to Pericleo. And they, um, let's say, put together all the records that refer to the same thing. So it's what we call a conflation of records. And it is maybe clearer if I show you this uh, tiny uh, graph. So for example, the item Rome in Pericleo is not just play at this Rome, but it's also Geonames Rome, and it's also, you know, the Dara Rome, and it's also the Vicky Rome, and so on. And last, we have references, which are links between these items, regardless the kind of items. And when Pericleo started, um, as I was saying, it had a very, very strong focus on place references. So there were places, and then there were other things that link to places. While now we have you know, items and they are all at the same level from a, a data point of view. Uh, so the relationships are also um, on, the same, on the same level. But let's have more fun with random queries. Uh, no, wait, no, no. Let's go back to, to the visualization. Uh, other couple of things about the visualization. So um, one dot uh, in the map can represent many items, which is why uh, they vary in size, but at the same time, one item can be represented by many dots, for example, if we are talking about an itinerary. Um, and now we go back to the random queries. So um, just to you know, explore the potential of per player and also to give you an idea of how to connect um, very different kind of sources, very different kind of uh, records, because our partners are uh, quite diverse. Uh, I really tried the random searches and I went with my favorite words like crocodile. So if you look for crocodile in Perupleo, what you get are some geographical hits, which uh, are kind of cute. It's the city of Crocodilopolis in Egypt. But you also get some um, uh, annotations, because one of the possible records that we ingest are annotations of text. And these annotations of the um, histories of by Herodotus has been made in our annotation tool, Recogito. So if you click on the dots, oh no. Okay, I will show you that later. Uh, you, <laughs> sorry, I did, this, I did that last night when I realized that the internet was so bad. Um, you will see that, I mean, if you click on the dot, you see a little snippet of the text that has been annotated, but I have another example, we are, we are covered. So another very good word, ISIS. So this is, these are the results for ISIS, and we get you know, some expected things, like you know, related to Egypt, but you see we have geographical features, we have a number of temple of ISIS, of course, uh, we have uh, artifacts to represent ISIS that maybe are, you know, Located, they were found on their, uh, they are held, you know, in museums that are uh, not exactly where we would expect them to be. And another thing that you might have noticed uh, is that all the sources are um, identified by an icon uh, that has a different letter and color, and that we have a different icon for each of our data partner. Um, so, for example, that as green is for the Heritage Gazette of Libya. Uh, that you know, as a record for the uh, Temple of Isis in Cyrene, and as I was saying, you know, we always have uh, a link back to the original source, uh, whatever whatever that is. We only connect to things that are online and that we can refer back to. So, other fun word, ship. Why not? Uh, we got quite a lot of hits with ship, and we have you know various and uh, different things from the House of the Ship Europa. Uh, to actual ships that are um, held in the museums and there are records about them in the Viki um, database, but, and this time I do have them, we also have annotations from the histories that talk about uh, the ship uh, in the Aegean Sea. And I think that was my last random example. I spared you the one with the siren, which is also very cute. I invite you to do that. So um, this... Um, this last overview was, again, to, um, to make the point that um, it's, not about, uh, it's not mainly about places anymore, it's really about uh, the data and it's really about the connection between them. So, uh, as I said, this is a proof of concept. 
but if you do have an interesting database and you would like you know, people to uh, explore it in connection with our other databases and sources, uh, get in touch with us. Um, it is open source, so Perplayo is on GitHub. So if you want to download your local copy of Perplayo and customize it, there are also you know, single bits of Perplayo of the code that you can reuse, for example, the time slider. Uh, you can just embed it in your own project if you think that that is useful. Um, and one last thing, uh, talking about the community, um, we are very, very uh, proud to uh, participate into the organization every year of a symposium that is called Link Pasts. And the next one is going to be here in Germany, in Mainz. And I uh, wanted to use this uh, opportunity to invite you all uh, to join us in Mainz. And uh, Kai is also here, and he will be doing most of the organization. So come and see us in Mainz in December if you can.